Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. As promised, I'm going to do a cover crop termination video right now because as we all know, or as we are so often told, well-executed cover crops are absolutely incredible for soil health. Honestly, there's really no debate there, not in the research, not in my experience, and not in the experience of others. Few things really amplify soil health quite like cover crops, and simultaneously and respectfully, they can be superbly obnoxious to manage. So today I'm going to really dive into small scale, no-till cover crop termination, and I'm not really gonna hold back. I love cover crops, but certain aspects have been neglected by the popular literature, and others have been, at least in my experience, a bit oversold. So it's early, I'm getting rained on, let's kill some freaking cover crops. I feel like I'm feeling a little ornery this morning for 6 a.m. First things first, if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, you're awesome. And if you gain something from this video or any of our videos, you can always support our work at patreon.com slash no-till growers or pick up a copy of my book, The Living Soil Handbook, at no-tillgrowers.com specifically where the proceeds go to making you more content like this. And also where I discuss cover crops in greater detail than I ever could in a YouTube video. Yep. Okay, so as I mentioned at the top, cover crops are incredible soil enhancers, but one of the big challenges growers face in realizing those benefits is how to get rid of the cover crops uh, when you need to get plants in the ground. But in this video, we're gonna go beyond just crimping because honestly, I don't know that crimping alone, especially on our scale, is necessarily the best option for most people. For that reason, I'm also going to posit some ideas for tools or techniques that may be more effective than crimping with a little engineering. One obligatory note here, this video is mostly going to deal with rye cover crops because it is currently late May and that's what I'm dealing with, but there is some crossover with uh, summer cover crops like sorghum sudan and sun hemp and so on. Um, so essentially we're talking grains plus things like vetch and maybe Austrian winter peas or something like that. The hardy, overwintered, hard to kill stuff. Because many softer legumes like field peas and beans and buckwheat. Bro. Because many softer legumes like field peas and beans and buckwheat are fairly easy to kill with say a mower or a few hard frosts, the hardier stuff, however, uh, are a bit more complicated. So they need a little bit more fleshing out. Uh, for the first method, I'm going to tackle the easy one, crimping then tarping. On a very large scale, this is not going to be super applicable to you because you would need massive tarps, though it is possible you could use black plastic or landscape fabric. Not ideal in my opinion as a lot of work and a lot of plastic, but technically possible. Anyway, the idea here is that you stomp the cover crop to the ground around milk stage uh, and place a plastic opaque tarp over top to kill it. Milk stage is not a requisite with tarps, but it will speed things up. So milk stage and grains real quick. The three stages you need to know really are flowering, when you see little yellow flowers in the seed head, then when the kernels fill up, and you can press a little liquid out of the kernels, that's milk stage. If that liquid is a little doughy, that's called dough stage, which is fine too, but that's, that is like the third and sort of last step before grain stage, meaning weed seeds. So kill it before the oh weed stage, what, that's what I call it, which would be, you know, your milk stage or your dough stage. Uh, milk stage is about a week or two window, though again, that doesn't matter quite as much for the tarping method or of termination, but it will for others that we will discuss in a minute. And it helps for termination in general. So for the tarping method, you smash the cover crop to the ground and cover it with a tarp for several weeks until terminated. And then you transplant into that mulch. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. And shout out to Daniel Mays of Frith Farm for all his work on this. Uh, his book is really excellent. You should check that out. Now, one thing I've been doing is trying to figure out what the best method for crimping is, because although I like the stomp method and it is very effective, it's no small amount of labor. Excellent cardio workout, but on hot days here in Kentucky, it can be a lot to ask of our employee, Greg. So with the tools I already own, I've been trying to speed up that process a little bit and reduce the wear on the person crimping. So in this patch here, I tested four different methods. Stomp crimping, rolling over the cover crop with a mower but not mowing, rolling over with a heavier implement called the power harrow but without the PTO engaged, 
and then rolling over with the power harrow with the PTO engaged and the tine several inches above the soil. I don't know what to call this last method with the power harrow set high with the tines actually spinning, maybe clobbering because it basically beats the tar out of the cover crop and kind of scatters it. That said, it is far and away my favorite of the methods that we've used here and has been for many years. It's the most effective, it's the fastest, and the least labor, though it does require a BCS and a power harrow, which I would not just buy for this purpose alone. So it's not a method for everyone. A board and some rope is much more affordable, but since I already own the power harrow and I never use it enough and it's getting, and it's heavy as all get out, I've started to test to see what else I can do with it. And this sort of clobbering thing has been great, though I will say the roller sometimes gets clogged with um, grass, and if you have the tine set too low, they also will get clogged. Anyway, more on that idea of clobbering in a minute. No matter what you use in this sort of tarping method, you need the cover crop to be as flat as possible against the soil. If the tarp is elevated at all, like if the cover crop is lifting it up, it'll be less effective. The next step, once the cover crop is down, is to cover it with the tarp for at least two hot weeks, preferably a third if you can swing it, maybe more. I'm just gonna power through this rain. Clear plastic can work as well, uh, and perhaps a bit faster, but you want to leave it on for at least one hot week. Uh, some limited studies have shown deleterious effects on soil life after like 14 days of solarizing, so just keep that in mind. However, if you have some old high tunnel plastic laying around, solarization could be a good second life for it. Anyway, when we pulled the tarp back, every method we used for crimping was technically fine. They all worked. The only real difference was some were less flat against the soil than others. Clobbering was the closest to the soil. Stomping was sort of the second closest and then the rest. Uh, but we agreed that the we liked the look of the clobbered the most. Uh, it was the flattest against the soil uh, and was the most spread out. So we just went back and over everything for a little uniformity's sake with the power harrow. And again, it was power harrow was very up high and we had the tines spinning. And then we transplanted our midsummer tomatoes into that. Um, so that's the method. That's method number one. One notable additional trial that we threw in there, because I guess I just can't help myself was that we added partially decomposed wood chips over a bed that we tarped. And interestingly, the rye is coming back through that now quite vigorously. The mulch didn't decompose the rye as I had hypothesized. It protected it from the tarp. We add compost mulches after tarping sometimes, but I thought this was worth a trial as well. And perhaps that is a good segue to editorialize for a second because the sort of weed suppressing mulch effects of cover crops is maybe a bit oversold sometimes. Now, it's oversold not as much by the farmers, perhaps, but by the researchers and organizations most enthusiastic about cover cropping. Uh, what isn't often highlighted is that the true mulching effect in a large percentage of cases requires just some addition of some sort, something other than the cover crop and a crimper. For larger scale conventional growers, it may be a small amount of herbicide at termination uh, or some heavy tillage on a small scale, um, you know, organic no-till scale. It's a tarp for several weeks that will kill the cover crop as well as surface weeds, or it's supplementary mulches like straw or compost, or it's some combination of those things. Like in order for weeds to not become a factor after the cover crop is terminated, there generally has to be some additional support in every cover crop trial I've had, regardless of density. This may also be true because here in Kentucky zone 6B, we are semi-subtropical, so humid and hot and organic matter breaks down very quickly here. This even further reduces an already light mulching effect. So we often supplement with something like hay, like I mentioned, or compost. Now that isn't a bad thing. That's just an understated thing. That is, it's just something that I want people interested in using cover crops to understand, especially in warmer climates. It's not necessarily gonna be all the mulch you need. And a crimper alone may not be enough. I, I recommend watching this video as well as I talk about cover crop management uh, strategies and things not to do, um, which will help. Of course, if you have a really clean slate before laying your cover crops down, a thin mulch should be fine. So that is to say just a cover crop mulch should be fine. Most of us though, especially with long growing seasons, will need not only something else to kill the cover crop, but something further to assist in the weed suppression effect. Mulches like hay, straw, compost, etc. So just keep that in mind. 
And I should just say that if you have great strategies for no or low till cover crop termination, put them in the comments section. As always, I do not have a monopoly on all the best advice or best experience, so lend us your brain, you know, for science, sort of. Okay, so that crimp and tarp method is very easy and very straightforward, and, but could this be done without the tarp on a small scale? Well, I have a few methods I've been working on and will certainly have different levels of efficacy depending on where you are and your tools, but I thought it could be interesting to share them. And that way, if you're interested or if you have the tools, you can trial it, trial it very small, but trial it on your own farm and tell me what you think. Oh, and I should note, someone will probably ask about the crimper that goes with the BCS. I have not yet tried it, uh, but have heard mostly mm, sort of meh results. A lot of us are working on permanent semi-raised beds, so it's tough to crimp the edges with something like that, and it is a little unwieldy to drag around, I hear. Uh, let us know if you've had good experience with that particular tool, though. I don't want to diss it too hard without having actually used it myself. Uh, it's not very good practice. I have been experimenting with the clobber method, I really have no idea what to actually call that. Without tarping, as described earlier with the power harrow um, raised up, running, the idea is that we clobber the cover crop fully at milk stage and then just plant into that. I like the clobber method because like the crimping method, it sort of pinches the stem so the plant can't transport nutrients through the xylem and phloem, um, but it pinches not just the top stems like crimping sometimes does, but nearly all of the stems because it's sort of stirring and crimping all at the same time. Again. I will still need some supplementary mulch to get the, you know, thorough mulch effect, uh, but I do see some potential here in clobbering cover crops rather than crimping them, or clobbering while crimping, perhaps. Uh, I am clearly using a tool designed for soil work to kill the cover crop, and it is therefore imperfect, like don't go run out and buy a power harrow, but perhaps there is a nugget of an idea here where instead of simply pressing the cover crop to the ground with a crimper and the chevron design, chevron design just being like that little design you see there on the crimper, uh, we could beat it up a little bit to increase termination results and perhaps scatter the cover crop for a better weed suppression. I don't think the power harrow is necessarily the best design for that result, but perhaps it's a good starting point. I've tried the flame weeder uh, and it doesn't quite penetrate deep enough, but what about something like a steam weeder? Um, hell, I recently discovered braided landscapes. Is there an idea and you should Google it because it's fascinating, but is there an idea uh, for a machine that could braid rows for cover crops? My, my point only being, have we fully explored the world of cover crop termination without tillage yet? Like fully explored it. I'm not convinced. One way that we've been having success in killing cover crops for quite a while is simply mowing it with a flail mower. We set our flail mower really low. Um, we make it so it hits right at the surface. So we make a high pass just to chop it down a little bit and then a low pass to kind of finish it off. This requires a fairly high powered mower, in our case, a 13 horsepower BCS, but essentially we mow the cover crop down around milk stage. You could also use a scythe or a sickle bar mower or whatever you have as long as you are fully at that milk stage. Then we wait a week and we mow it again. We lose a lot of mulching effect here, but the mulch is maybe the fourth best reason to grow cover crops anyway. I feel like I'm about to get rained out. The soil organic matter, the nutrient gathering, the increasing of soil respiration, those are all way ahead of the mulch factor in my opinion. Weeds are the major issue here when talking about mowing because the rye, vetch, and crimson clover will mostly die, though maybe you will have to pick out some rye later, uh, but any extra weeds will fill in after the cover crop is down. So you could either add an additional mulch or do some of the lower till management techniques that we've been playing with. To explain, we have this area where I've been trying to establish chamomile in the pathways, which smells amazing, by the way. Watch this video for more on that. But the reason that I want, that I don't want to tarp the whole area, it would simply kill all those chamomile pathways, which I love. Uh, this was kind of by design. I wanted to force myself to come up with some new ways to terminate cover crops without tillage, or in this case, with very minimal disturbance. So what we did here was mow, as I just described with the flail mower, then rake the mulch off because it's not that useful to us in this particular situation, then lightly power harrowed the surface to kill any germinating weeds. Then we picked out what weeds or rye that we missed. 
I'm gonna get through this video wet or no, alive. Those are kind of the same thing. Um, lightly raked it again and then planted the lettuce. Note here that the power harrow is only going down far enough to kill any like germinating weeds, not down to the root zone where the greatest sort of microbial populations and soil structure reside. Um, that's a very important note. All the cover crop roots are left intact. Um, think of it like a very heavy raking. It's a little bit intensive, but the soil, which was notably very poorly drained deep compost beds last year, is vastly improved. Also an early cover crop termination version of this mowing technique was what we did for our sweet potatoes. Essentially, we mowed the rye early, 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 and then used the rotary plow. This is what it's like to live in Kentucky. It's just like, it's just gonna rain for a while, on and off, all the time. Yep. Essentially, we mowed the rye early before it was flowering. Then we used the rotary plow <laughs> hilariously wet. All right, sorry for the rain noise. We're just going to knock this out. Used the rotary plow to raise our pathways into our beds, uh, thus throwing the path soil onto the mowed cover crop. Uh, we then tarped to kill any newly revealed weeds, pulled back the tarps, and we will shove the sweet potatoes in. So that's another technique. I think there's a lot of potential for no and low till cover crop techniques out there. I could probably do 10 videos on this subject, but it's raining for now. You know, let me know any questions that you have or anything I missed in the comment section. What are some things you found that work for cover crops in this sort of soil health focused approach? Um, snag a copy of the book, the uh, Living Soil Handbook from NoTillGrowers.com, where the proceeds go to making you more rainy content like this. Um, like this video if you like this video. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel if you want to be awesome. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Maybe. Bye.